Okay, so did I think the movie about a high school girl that falls in love with a resurrected corpse as they go on a murder spree to make him whole again would be my favorite movie of the year so far? Absolutely not, but it's time to talk about Lisa Frankenstein. What's up guys, I'm Sully, and today we're talking about the brand new horror comedy, Lisa Frankenstein. All you need to know about this one is that the story goes like this. In 1989, a misunderstood teenager has a high school crush, who just happens to be a handsome corpse. After a set of playfully horrific circumstances bring him back to life, the two embark on a murderous journey to find love, happiness, and a few missing body parts along the way. So a lot of you guys know that I'm a very big fan of horror comedies, but honestly, I feel like good ones are kind of hard to come by these days, and they're not all that easy to make either. The writing and the performances have to be top-notch because you're attempting to perfectly balance two extremely contrasting genres that aren't supposed to go together. You want it to be spooky, you want it to be funny, and you somehow want both of those aspects to play off of one another. And I'll say right off the bat that this movie isn't particularly particularly scary at any point through its duration. All of those horror aspects are much more related to the gross acts that are being depicted on screen, but what this one lacks in legitimate scares, it more than makes up for in fun. I think the best way I can describe it is like this. If you took Edward Scissorhands, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, Heathers, and tossed them all into a blender on the highest possible setting, what you'd get is Lisa Frankenstein. So this movie is the directorial debut for Zelda Williams, who is the daughter of the late great Robin Williams, and I think she does a really impressive job here for her first outing. The pacing is really solid, the cinematography is kind of addicting, and the overall 80s vibe feels pretty authentic. Now if you pair all of that with a script written by Diablo Cody, who did Jennifer's Body and has already proven that she can really nail that kind of dark and campy high school setting in the past, you're already going to be cooking with gas here. There's just a really good constant split of heartfelt moments, unexpected humor, and gross out gags. This movie knows exactly what it's trying to be, it wears its heart on its sleeve, and it doesn't overstay its welcome, clocking in at a beautiful 1 hour and 40 minutes. So many movies nowadays take a really good concept and just continue to drag on and on for some reason and don't know when to call it quits. Luckily, that's not a problem here, and for a horror comedy like this, sub two hours is perfect. We have to talk about the cast here for a little bit, because Catherine Newton does a great job as the lead character in this movie. She's very convincing as this misunderstood and quirky high school student whose life takes a wicked dark turn that she fully embraces. I've always liked her in whatever films she's done in the past, but I feel like she's still been out there looking for that big hit. And I don't think this kind of movie is going to go on to make an absolute boatload of money at the box office, but there is definite cult classic potential here, people. Then you have Cole Sprouse, who's the other half of our lead duo, and he does a lot with this performance without saying pretty much a single word. He conveys a ton with his body language, and I was continuously impressed with his physical comedy skills. The chemistry of our two leads in a movie like this could really make or break the whole thing, so I'm happy to report that they pretty much fit together effortlessly. Getting to the side character, characters, Carlo Gugino is a welcome addition to any cast, and that's no different here either, but I was really impressed with Liza Soberano in this film. I had never seen her in anything before, but she plays the role of the popular cheerleader sister really well, and probably dishes out the best one-liners of the entire movie. I just always feel that I have to give a movie props when it takes big, creative swings for the fences. In this world we live in today of reboots and sequels, that can be pretty rare. I mean, come on, a corpse is accidentally brought back to life, and a high school girl Girl falls in love with him as they go on a murder rampage to make him whole again as she regenerates him through her sister's tanning bed? Like what? If you're one of those people that says there are no more original movie ideas anymore and you don't go check this one out at theaters, don't even talk to me because this one is very worthy of your hard-earned cash. Now after getting all of that out there, is this movie the best thing since sliced bread? I mean, no, there are definitely some plot holes and jokes that don't land along the way, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't extremely entertained the entire way through. Overall, guys, Lisa Frankenstein was a pretty big surprise for me. The performances are solid, the aesthetic is addicting, and the pacing is handled effectively. The styles of Zelda Williams and Diablo Cody clearly match up well together, and I'm hoping we see more projects from that pair in the future. But at the end of the day, it succeeds at being funny, heartfelt, and gross. What more could you ask for from a coming of age horror comedy. 
This isn't saying much since we just got out of the trash month known as January, but this is far and away the best movie I've seen so far this year. Lisa Frankenstein gets a Sully score of three and a half stars. So that's my review of the latest horror comedy. What do you think your favorite movie is that blends a bunch of different genres together? Let me know in the comments below. I'm always adding more to my watch list. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys at the next one.